Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next and latest and greatest session of Fate the Rise of Madness. You'll notice Hello. that there are no cameras and that, in <laughs> fact, we are... Uh, you can see just the window that has Roll20 up. Uh, uh, that is because for at least a little while we're going to be going digital. Uh, might make it more permanently this way just because it's easier for everyone else. Because some people live like really far away and some people... It's just better for timing because we can play longer this way as well because everybody's at the house. No pants. No no pants. No style. pants. <laughs> no pants style. <laughs> Except for uh, Corvus or Eli because he's at the airport. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> you can't wear no pants there. Or yeah, yeah, yeah that, that would be uh, the the, uh, the 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 the. Security folks don't care much for that. Yeah, I don't want security tackling me. For <laughs> this is very funny. Push us away. That's smaller in the. Do what now? Push us away to make this smaller in the cell phone window. Oh. I, I am plugged in, but I mean, I'm playing on cell phone, and it's a little limited. Yeah, that's true. All right. Now, we may have occasionally spotty audio. By the way, for those of you watching, just on account of the nature of internet nisness. So, um, streaming the one screen, though, I think seems to be running very smoothly. <laughs> Smoother than having five or six cameras up, for sure. <clears throat> and there may come a time when we have our little camera thingies down there by our by our names. I mean, if I'm playing on a regular basis, uh, I will have a camera on me because I like to feel nice, so I'll have a camera for those guys. But yeah, uh, not today. Nope, we're using just just the, can't stand up. We're using the Rola. All right, last session. A little quick uh, recap, and then we'll jump in. On the way back, the group was assailed by Nikoloths, sent by the Cult of Madness, abandoning the medallions for a time as they were causing uh, them to pass out. You find a note, which you take to Dr. Strangelove's office in Sartek City to have it translated, uh, to the shop called Strangelove's Oddities. He specializes, Quetzal was not here for this, um, but he specializes in spoons. Ooh. That is his, like, he collects them. He likes to enchant them. Uh, so that's his jam. He's a weird elf guy. Yeah, I got you. That's, good, that's uh, a weird one, Bob. He's, he's very eccentric. Um, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like a that always measured out exactly how much like a perfect amount of seasoning or something like that yeah. yeah he has spoons that can create water he has spoons that can make food taste good i.e sending you know putting out just the right amount of salt or other seasonings as needed um there are spoons that can generate some poison oh no uh, there's one that was locked up in the back that everyone saw it was kind of a bigger one and it can, once per week, create the Hero's Feast. That's dope. I say once per week because Hero's Feast lasts for 24 hours. And if it was yeah. once per long rest, then it would be broken. We would just always have it. <laughs> like, all right, time to feast, boys. Yeah, it would be too broken. I may even extend that out longer. But obviously, nobody, you guys can't afford that right now. It's a, That's a legendary <laughs> item. Also, Bob, I, I stand corrected. It was, uh, we'll the, sell our ship. Spoons, I got you, uh, use the command word. It'll fill with any spice or seasoning that you, you desire. Yes, it's a common, common magic item. What is <laughs> the entire spice cabinet in one spoon? What is the name of the spoon? I'll, let, I'll leave that up to you. Yeah. Oh, boy. Your ship took 21 points of damage in the battle with the Nikoloths. 
I need to make a note of that, actually. Call it the spoon of ultimate spicy butthole. All good. Just, just tell her to be a little bit. Tell her not to scream. Everyone can hear. Her. Well, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people. Here. That's, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Um, you, after making a new friend and a potential ally, the group heads back out. Uh, you you were just leaving Sartek City. Uh, when we ended the last session, so we're going to pick up back there. Um, you have essentially, at the speed that your ship goes, another day, day and a half maybe, before you get over to the forest. And Harriet, who is technically with you all, um, requests to be dropped off back where, like, back, back at that clearing where her father was uh, because she she hasn't seen her father in like nine years so there's they still have a lot more to catch up on I ask her to leave her bird <laughs> she's not gonna leave bye -bye. <laughs> ain't happening dude <laughs> All right, yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. I, um, I like open up my chest and I point inside for the bird. I'm like, huh? Ah? And I have like a really nice nest in there for it. Yeah, it, it says, it, it, well, it just kind of screams at you, but isn't like not going in. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Uh, I'm sad. Quick side note. Uh, as I had sort of stated before, the ship had taken 21 hit points of damage. Oh yeah. Um, I forgot about that. It has it has three hundred total. So you've got a good while before any crazy stuff happens. But it is a one hundred white draka to repair one hit point. Ooh. Wait, one and point. So that's how we spend all of our money. So Can I just yeah. hire a uh, shady contract uh, for that, it's like a cut rate price. Uh, it'll make your ship vulnerable to damage until it takes all that damage back again. Ugh. Uh, so, yes. Oh, so that's ship repair. We need a, so, uh, so what's it called? Carpenter. The thing is... Alright, boys, we're gonna start a delivery service. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's the thing, though, right? That is... That, that sort of cost is by design so that you don't just go willy-nilly ramming your ship into everything. Uh, because Which I know if you keep doing that, it's going to totally break, would. and it'll cost you, like, once it fully breaks down, it like, if it hits zero hit points, it'll cost you 30,000 white draka to fix. Woo! Yeah. So be careful with how you use it, because uh, it's very expensive to fix. You know, feel free to ram it into enemies and all that fun stuff. That's up to you and guys. Spend ten grand and... Just spend shit tons of money. I feel like this is a it. trap. I mean, uh... <laughs> like I said, we need to make a delivery service and charge like obscene amounts of money. Because you can to... go stupidly fast. Yeah, we can we can get stuff way faster than anyone else can ever. That's true. As, put as, our jobs as zeros. Like Te technically, that's true, except for there is teleportation magic. Well, that's also way expensive. Not if you well, have a wizard in your employ, then they just have to have the right implements for it. Okay, well you're no fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, we okay. That said, well, we advertise our, get... our services to people who don't have wizards. Yeah. 
That's that's a good idea. At the docks. <laughs> Where everyone else uses. Yeah. Plus, with what your ship can do, you can get materials that are typically not generally accessible. Like, you can go pretty deep down underwater to get, you know, specific kinds of whatever. We'll, we'll figure... If that ever comes up, we'll we'll deal with it then. <laughs> Wait, we have a means of going deep underwater. Yeah, the ship can fly, can sail on the water, and can go underwater. Yes. So that's why it's so expensive. This is a dope ship. Where the hell did we get this thing but from? But it will not give. So I gave it to you. Oh, sweet. Yeah. That so, so you were given the ship called the Sylph by that uh, Count guy, Count Bunkirk. Who who okay. who willed it to you after he died because you solved his wife's murder? Yeah, uh, I remember that ship. I just never, we never and, went to it while I was there. Right. But, so, so it's a ship that can fly. So and it it sub wasn't it wasn't. But Sven fixed it up for you. Oh my gosh! Because he, he basically just said, "Hey, I'm I'm exhibit now, and I'm going to pimp your ship." <laughs> yeah. Well, he knew and knows because I know that. <laughs> Your characters are fated to shift how the world functions down the road. Uh, and in order to optimize how you do that, you need definitive means of transportation. Uh, Little does he know we're going to fuck it up. <laughs> and th that's up to you. <laughs> you may very well do so. Uh, and then you'll... That'll cost... That's that's the crazier part, too, because if you like wreck it underwater, you guys are boned. Yeah. <laughs> so... Seriously, Unless, be careful. <laughs> uh, I'm there, and I can cast water breathing on the whole party or something like that. I can fly. I'm good. That's but just yeah, in the water. I say if we're efficiently uh, yeah. deep, then uh, pressure is just going to crush us all anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Quetzal, Quetzal thinks he so, can fly underwater. No, just I humans can just, survive to about. Just as a friendly uh, reminder, what is it here? Uh, the way that 150 yards underwater. That's yeah, it. Something like that. Uh, you. When your ship's underwater, if you remember, it creates it. It seals below deck, of course, so like no water gets in and all that stuff. Um, and there is a sort of magical canopy around the deck that's about 15 feet high. It's like so, a bubble. Um, so dope. So you can you can travel like when you go through the bubble, it magically um, corrects the pressure. So you don't like explode or implode when you enter and exit high pressure. Uh, yeah. And uh, like fish and stuff, like stuff can pass through the barrier. So like a shark might be swimming by, <laughs> and if and it fall on deck, and if it if it lands just so, it'll land on the deck. <laughs> yeah. So. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, that should make for some interesting uh, events. Looks like happen. sharks yeah. back on the menu, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you have a day, a day and a half, give or take, on the ship. It's flying northwards toward the forest. Is there anything that you want to do? In the meanwhile, you can take this time to fully explore the ship that I have sort of mapped out for you now. Um, pick your rooms, as you will. I'm okay. gonna cook. Uh, I'm gonna cook some arts. Good deal. Some hot pockets. Um, I guess the most metallic thing is actually the engine room right the very bottom of the ship <sighs> yes so you can when you go down into d down to that area that that blue barrier yeah is like you can see through it and you can see that the engine is running smoothly uh it's pretty quiet for, for a big magic engine um, I'm gonna gonna try to pass gonna, through it. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I, I'm not going to. I'm going to chill right here. Yeah, I'm not going to go through uh, it. You kind of like reach out gently to touch the uh, the the 
the shining sort of wall of force. And you can feel the crackling energy. It doesn't hurt you or anything, but it kind of tickles a little, tingles a little. Oh, and, I like this feeling. I touch it again. <laughs> and when you try to like apply pressure, it it doesn't give. Like it's a translucent, it's a force field door essentially. Um, there does appear to be on the like on your because you're kind of facing the door, right? On your right hand mm -hmm. side, there is a keypad. Um, that has, uh, it's like a full keyboard, right? And it has a sort of digital display that says, enter password. <laughs> so, uh, you do not have the password to, to verify that. Is there a keypad? Yeah. Game. It's a can QWERTY, I see, it's a QWERTY uh, keyboard. Can I see if I can tell if any of the numbers are scuffed? <laughs> and maybe they go a certain way. <laughs> Wait, allow me to don my Sherlock Holmes hat. <laughs> uh, uh, sure, sure. My... Give All me right. uh, however you want to do it. I need an investigation check. Investigation? From if... if if Quetzal wants to do it with with advantage with his hat, oh, uh, he can. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right. First roll, boys. Twenty-five. Not good, dude. Bad. Twenty-five is pretty good. Yeah. With advantage, right? He gets to roll again. No, no I did. That is advantage. I thought oh, that was two of them. Oh, that's yeah. two. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, 25 is very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you see that there were uh, there there are a handful of keys on it that were that are a little more scuffed. You do notice that. Uh, the, okay, what keys are they? Oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a password that changes every 30 days? <laughs> Could not be. <laughs> Probably not. I don't, I mean, spin's far enough to do that, but I don't, I don't think that he, he would. Hang on. If it's necessary. I mean, Spin should know that we're going to try to get into the store. <laughs> he knows what he's dealing with. <laughs> you don't present me think... a door with a password on it and expect me not to guess the password. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What would he call? What would he make as a silly password? I'm trying to think here. Hang on. <laughs> oh, this is excellent news. <laughs> These headsets will follow me all the way to the bathroom. Oh, nice! Great. What are we doing? Bluetooth. <laughs> what are we doing? The best life right now. <laughs> oh, we're we're Bluetooth living at large, life. boys. We made it. <clears throat> That's very funny. I'm just sitting here vaping up a storm, chucking clouds. Vape, bro. Vape. Uh, okay. <laughs> are you ready? Yep. Oh, very interesting. Okay. Here are the letters. In no particular order. M. S. L. A. E. C. And U. Okay. You got their you know, flaming tongue? What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a flaming tongue. <laughs> it's not no, it's, animal, it's, it's hang on. Toying around with this. Yeah. Let me uh, correct that for you. There, Clank. C. Oh. 
not C. Ah, yeah. All right. oh. yeah. Bless you, Sam's Club, right now. Those, okay. yeah. Yeah. Those are the letters that have been pressed. S L A C U. Is that what you said? Hmm. M S L A E C U. The the password is camels. No. <laughs> <laughs> Camel does not have a U camels. in it. No, it doesn't. Damn it, you're right. I fucked up. Also, with that 25, I'll give you this. You don't know exactly which ones, but some of them have impressed more than one. No, I got that. Ah. I still want to sit here and just admire the engine room. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell how many have impressed more than once, though. No, no obvious. You cannot. But you can tell that they have been pressed more than once. By the way, when you put in camels. It says, invalid password, attempt one of ten. Yeah, yeah, I figured as much. Yeah. Gate change again. <laughs> After ten failed tries, the password will reset. You don't know to what, but... Yeah. <laughs> All right. No. The cells, by the way, are barred. It's got, other than the sort of black lined walls, um, the green lines are all barred section. There are six doors that run along, and on the far, sort of at the point at the top of the of, of the schematic here, uh, there's a hook that has the keys to the cells. And then, of course, every bedroom has uh, a bed and a foot locker or some kind of uh, storage thing so you can put your stuff in anything you want to put in there essentially can go unless it's like you know you can't like stuff a dragon down there or whatever but hey within reason you can put All right. basically anything i guess dragonborn <laughs> you can stuff a dragonborn down there <laughs> yes <laughs> yes Chris, Chris, look at krista <laughs> Damn, this is rough. Now, did everybody recover their medallions? Or was that left behind? Nope, mine was lost in the forest. Okay. You mean that? Thing you got to be in the exclusive club that I thought was really stupid, and you lost it. Well, yeah, uh, it it started to paralyze them. It, oh, so the bad idea was actually a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it turns out it may yeah. have been a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. What do you know? Uh, Quetzal will never admit that. Cult was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, Quetzal won't admit that. I just, just wanted to say that out loud. That idea was, in fact, that idea. that's hilarious. Yeah, um, Kane did not have to worry. Because I said about, that multiple times. Yeah, Kane didn't have to worry about his because he got polymorphed a little bit so that his blood was different when they took. Oh, really? It. Yeah, he hired a wizard to polymorph him to be a little bit different than he actually is, so that his blood. Uh, the blood. So his blood is slightly yeah. It didn't. Or it, it or didn't. Well, just like different human, like a different 
it, oh. it, it, it didn't match up. In, okay, so it's a different human's blood instead of his own. Yeah. Clever girl. Yeah, it was very clever, I thought. Mm. Right. We, okay. Are we like losing people in our game? Uh, I accidentally pressed the button. Oh, okay. I don't see Clovis, uh, but that's okay. I hit I hit the wrong I, I'm about to get on board a plane. Oh, right. Ah. Like that's within fair. the next 10 minutes or so. <laughs> that's good news. That is good. good news. Yeah, it is good news. Yeah. <laughs> I'll actually get to Denver where I can legally go smoke in public. Hey. <laughs> hey, well, send some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I can do, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll probably just go buy a little vape cartridge and that'll be that it. Raw. <laughs> That uh, <laughs> and damn bar. <laughs> wow, guys. <sighs> Are you working on the code still? Uh, I'm trying. So far, I've got Muscle Man, but the N is not there. But I guess there could be letters that aren't worn out. Um, I'm not trying any of these. I'm just yeah, looking. like some some were used more than others. Yeah, actually, here. Give me one more investigation check. Okay. And let's see how good it is. Oh! oh Daddy yeah. 20, dude. Okay. Daddy 20. That's what we need. All right. That's, uh, that's 100%. And what's your what modifier? Uh, eight. This is 28. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a big number. That's, that's a big, tasty number. Okay. Two of the letters were used more than once. This is all that you can get from this, okay? Which, which two? The L and the A were used more than once. Now, even with the 28, it's not going to give you precisely how many times it was used. But you can tell that the L and the A were used more than once. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, the war room where Krishna and Cain are uh, just has that's that's just like a big round table. Um, it has seats around it, stuff like that. It's for planning, of course. Uh, so you can, we can go meet up and just chat about what needs to be done and all that kind of stuff. It has windows that kind of look out from the sort of top point area. It has, it has windows. Thick glass. But reasonably clear. Ah. <clears throat> um... Who wants what room, by the way? There's still... There's a total of eight more rooms that can be utilized. Clank doesn't technically need a room. Because he just, like, powers down. Actually, throughout the night... Throughout the night, I just want to, like, cycle between everyone's doors. Like, all of them. And just chill there for a good 10 to 15 minutes. And then just walk to the next door. <laughs> Cause you just like power down. You don't need a bed per se to lay down. I don't you, need a rest. You probably should claim a somewhere though to like store things. Uh, to store stuff. To, That's probably good. Just idea, to though. store like your personal items. So if you'll just move your your mini where you want your room to be. Obviously, right. Krishna and Quetzal don't need to do that because they have spaces already. I'll just, in the storage, boom. I'll just store everything in here. This is my room. I shut the door. Uh, you can totally, uh, you can absolutely stay in the storage room. I, I guess I, I'm the bank, right? So I might as yeah. well stay in here. That makes yeah. sense to me. That, yeah. I'm basically one of these chests. Yeah. You can actually tell from, like, whenever you step, in, step into the storage room that, number one, there's a bunch of, of little like 
There are big chests and small chests. There are like little barrels that you can put stuff in. There's some gem boxes and stuff. Um, uh, the walls of, of the storage room are uh, heavily reinforced. It's Llama Zeus. And. Uh-huh. Or Zeus Llama. Llama Zeus or Zeus Llama? Llama Zeus? Llama Zeus or Zeus Llama? How do you spell Zeus? Z U E S. There's no Z. Oh, it's just. No, look at the wrong one. God damn it. Let me try that again. That Z is a C. Wait, what word? What word did you come up with? It's llama. I know part of it's llama. Okay. No, it's, it's mall sauce. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> I was like, it makes sense. He's a god, uh, Zeus is a god, he's so, a llama. So, uh... <laughs> llama sauce. <laughs> so, Clank, uh, the door to the storage room, when you shut it, um, like you can definitely lock it from the inside, and it's like heavy duty. It's a heavy duty lock. Nice. So you would, you know, you could lock yourself in there, and I think realistically, only Kane might have a chance of of picking that door. I'd like to buy a Val. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which door am I picking? No, I'm just like you. You don't have to pick any door. I'm just saying. I know, that but which which door am I picking though? The storage <laughs> room door. Uh, I'd like to yeah. solve the puzzle. Okay. Llama claws. <laughs> like Santa Claus, but with a llama. Okay, so you try llama claws, and it says invalid password. Damn Attempt. it. There's three ten. L's. Oh, no more. They said it could be more than two. Yeah. Llama claws. Huh? I'll keep working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was good. It was good. It was clever. Did you write that <laughs> game? Uh, that's funny. Llama sauce. It's got to have llama in it somewhere. Because. Because he's a llama. He's a fucking llama. It's got to have llama somewhere. <laughs> uh, are you going to try to pick the lock after uh, Clank closes it and locks it? Oh, Clank just went in there? Oh, I don't care. Just to try it out? Yeah, I say try it. And I say you poop okay. nose and I shut the door. <laughs> All right. You, you uh, do what? I? <laughs> I, sh- I shut the do- door and call him a poop nose. A poop nose. Okay. I <laughs> <Yeah. gotcha>. <laughs> See. Twenty-two is not enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poop knows. What is Krishna doing? <laughs> <laughs> you just running around? Yeah, yeah. Playing, playing with the because you you never used roll twenty before, have you? No, I haven't. I tried again. <clears throat> okay, twenty seven. Uh, is pretty good. <laughs> Uh, we'll say that you get, yeah, it'll measure stuff for you. Um, I forgot about the, uh... mm-hmm. We'll say that you can get a couple of the tumblers, but it's still like it's a very complicated lock. I unlock the door and I relock it all again. <laughs> <laughs> like sitting in the car and hitting unlock yeah. and lock. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on in crunch yeah, yeah. 
So you kind of figure out from the the attempts that you've made, and you've been very careful. So like, I'm not gonna make you break your your lock picks from this practice kind of thing. Yeah. Um. You imagine that the DC, not that you would like just talk this way in game, but um, the DC to pick that door is thirty. Yeah. I'll literally, even with a nat 20, I mean, I only get a plus 8. Yeah. So, it's bonkers. It's, it's basically, like, you would be better off trying to destroy the door, which would still take a while, uh, than trying to pick it. Well, let's not destroy the door in our brand new ship. No, no, certainly not. <laughs> Sound advice. Yeah. You got a new guest there, Quetzal. No, nah, not yet. I'm still working on it. Okay. None of these make any sense. Why do you need to get in there anyway? Listen, I see a door with a keypad. I want to <laughs> open it. It's just... I can't believe you rolled a natural 20. Do you really think anything he does is logical? No. <laughs> that just blows my mind that you rolled a natural 20. I'm a, smart, I'm a smart man. I'm not a wise man. Cult of madness. You said, they might be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want my blood? Sure. That's sure. Good. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving some text here. Bear with me. I'm copying the charts for the Locomancer onto this, so I can. I don't even need to pull up the page anymore. Nice. I'm trying to get this in such a way that it doesn't. Uh oh. Hang on. That's in the wrong space. I need to make it right here. Okay, there we go. Kane's room. Tag. I like it. Okay. Oh, Alright. You have quite some time to kind of mess around the ship. Um, you can... There is a... Uh, as we had kind of seen before, there's a bit of like a, a stunted main mast. It doesn't really serve any purpose uh, outside of you might be able to like climb up onto it to look out. But there's no, it's not like a ramped or uh, not ramped. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, railed platform. It's just, it comes up. It's just like a thick funky pole. It just comes up and stops at like 15 feet. But you could somebody could perch up there and just like sit and have their legs dangle or whatever. Well, if you I'm gonna hop to. off here, guys. Alright, All right, man. All right, I'll see if you guys are still on whenever I land in Denver. But that'll be three hours from now, so. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. The travel plan. Yeah. Later. Alrighty. See ya. See you guys. See ya. It could be Llama Clues. <laughs> you have you have eight more tries. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to burn through him just yet. But God damn it! It's, I know it has to be Llama because he's a fucking Llama and he's a goddamn Llama. Llama, I mean, all that has Llama in it. That's true. Um, that is... Llama Clues would be something witty that he would put. I think. Yeah. All right, I'll try Llama Clues. Okay. Uh, that is try three of ten. It did not. It was invalid password. Damn. All right. <clears throat> yep, yep. whispering over there Kane it keeps saying like you're typing and then it stops <laughs> you're typing. I'm, I'm so sorry I'm uh I'm like trying to type out the, the letters to oh oh I got say, you so I can visualize it <laughs> I got you <laughs> sorry I didn't realize that it was uh no it's totally fine I was just like and you're feel free you can whisper to other players also did we determine that llama sauce is incorrect we have not tried llama sauce actually. Um, but we're missing a letter if we do llama sauce. 
No, we're not. Are we? Mm. Let's try lava sauce. Okay. Uh, you sort of go down. Uh, where is? Yeah. Where is? There he is. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, you go down to the keypad, you punch in Lama Sauce, and hit enter. And it says, password accepted. Hey! <laughs> oh. And That's the, hilarious. the door uh, <sighs> powers down, and you can enter the engine room. <laughs> I sprint. For the engine room. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, unlocks the door that he's been hold of. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, uh, it's, it's open, and when you look at it, you can tell that it is largely, uh, like it's powered by Technos, as most things are. And beyond that, it makes absolutely zero sense. Like, and the only way that you can tell that it's powered by Technos is because it glows with the telltale sign that it's being powered by that. Uh, beyond that, there's like, there are odds and ends that are kind of attached to it. Um, Clank, you recognize some of the pieces to it, right? Like, you can definitely tell some of the basic parts, but it is very complicated. Uh, I want to act like I know everything when I'm in front of everybody else. I wanted to, like, <laughs> oh, this thing. This here is the flux capacitor. <laughs> you, would, you would need to, like... If the engine were to somehow get damaged, it would be very difficult to find someone who could repair it. Um, maybe as as you spend more and more time, like with the engine, so to speak, uh, you'll sort of be be able to figure a few things out. But without you know the plans or the knowledge of that, it would be ridiculously hard i see if not well impossible to this is my goal i will understand this ship this engine room at least that's how i'll unlock my final form <laughs> <sighs> um all right you do notice on the engine room side that there is a switch by the door it's not a keypad it's just a switch so you can turn the i door do not on and off. Yeah, we do not pull that at all. <laughs> we yeah. actually don't even notice it anymore. You can tell that it is uh, utilized to just turn the door on and off. It's just that on the outside, you have to have a keypad. Like, the panic ah. room. you have a panic room. You do kind of have a panic room. Yeah. The, pr the problem is, uh, if somebody tries a bunch of different passwords later, and you're sort of in the panic room, then once they're gone and it resets, you have no idea how to change the password or what the reset password is. So you would have to leave the door open, you know, independently of anything else, you know? Yeah. You couldn't just like shut it for later. So yeah, you have successfully cleverly with ridiculously good rolls uh, <laughs> discovered the password right. engine room you can also tell if it ever becomes relevant that you would be able to siphon just like an Artec pool you'd be able to siphon the magical energies from the engine to cast to indefinitely cast magic for at least a good while Oh, oh. Um, if that, for whatever reason, became necessary. You never know. May or may not. But for now, 
you you kind of understand that. Any anyone that can use magic can draw magic from where it's concentrated, including the engine. So and it's uh, not just you guys. The only place you can't do it where it's concentrated is where it's intentionally barred from that kind of thing, like the the barrier door. It's like you couldn't take the energy from the door to shut it down. You'd have to put in a password or whatever. So yeah. Great good times. Um, on the in in the this corner here. Did you see that ding? That ping? Maybe. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, there is a, and I'll probably add it in there later. But there's like a workbench that has some tools on it that you actually think might be able to be used to help prepare you, Clank. Uh, nice. They, they seem to be of at, at, Thank at, get over here. at, at the very least of, of like a similar sort of tooling. Um, but it's clearly tools that were are used to maintain for now maintain the engine. For now. Mm -hmm. For now. I'm gonna become this engine. <laughs> yeah. You must become the ship. Become yeah. the ship. And then we'll start a delivery service. What, like, like Gurren Lagann? <laughs> Where you can, like, become a giant robot from, like, be, the ship more changes like, shape. Be more like Kit, Kit Car from Knight Rider. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. I was going to leave my body down here and just transfer my soul back and forth. <laughs> um, interesting idea. And... Uh -huh. Now, as I'm kind of considering it, theoretically possible. Uh, just based on the, the way the Technos works um, and the way that you work, the way that you are as a robot man. Ooh. Uh, it's certainly, it, unless you definitively knew how to do it, it would be insanely dangerous to try that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not gonna be you like could, now. You could very I'm smart easily. Enough to be like, I'm just gonna just yeah, soul you could, it. <laughs> you could very easily destroy your your soul that way, uh, trying to transfer it from or like your consciousness, trying to like transfer it from your current vessel to the uh, to the ship. But that's an interesting idea, though. I will keep that in the back of my brain. After the excitement of opening the engine room, the rest of the day passes pretty, uh, pretty smoothly. Nothing uh, crazy happens. You see a few birds out out on the deck. Um, you <laughs> in like the the distant mountain peaks. You could have sworn you probably see a dragon or two just kind of flying around. Nothing anywhere close that would be of immense concern. Uh, but you definitely, there are definitely big nasties that fly around. Uh, just nothing by where you are. You see a handful of rooks, these gigantic birds that have like a 40 foot wingspan. Colossal birds. <clears throat> they nest super high up in the mountains. And from your height, and I don't know how high you're flying, if you're still flying around the 300 foot mark, or if you're flying any lower, uh, which... I would have still fly out of fireball range. That would be 300 foot. Nice. So. Technically speaking, it's like 150, but if the caster has spell sniper, then it's 240. 300 would definitely be the way to go. And with the smaller, sort of reduced number of people you have on the ship, you can actually all have on parachutes. Nice. Yeah, well, that probably would have been good. Yeah. To... 
<laughs> so I'm glad they, you brought that up. <laughs> they take so you currently have uh, six parachutes on the ship, and essentially they function like the uh, Featherfall spell. Cool. But they take a little bit of time to put on, and like as long as you're below decks, it's really not a big deal because it would take quite a bit to like blow the side out of the ship, for example. Uh, so you're more than likely safe from falling out of the ship below decks, but above, it's it's good to have on, and it takes like a minute to put on. So. Be careful with that too. The good news for you guys is that falling damage caps at twenty d six, and most of you can probably survive that now. Hey, let's test that yeah. theory. Because you hit <laughs> uh, you hit terminal velocity, and that's twenty d six damage. Am. It's not like you take a d six after the first ten indefinitely, because that doesn't make sense. You would you would reach a sort of critical speed. Yeah, I think all of you could survive that. Yep. Just about. Yeah. Some of you would be. Yay, survival. Some of you would be dying if it was maximum damage, because not all of you have 120 hit points or more. But you would. It's it wouldn't be it'd be insta death because you have to take. Um, damage equal to I think it's your hit points and the negatives before you can like could die instantly. So it's much harder to die instantly later on. Like now, for example, if you're level one, it's easy to take twenty four damage. Easier anyway. <laughs> or whatever it is. <laughs> Eight damage in Kane's sense. He had like no hit points. Got that six con. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. You reach the edge of the forest. We'll say, for purposes of this, that Harriet tends to stay above decks just because uh, she's like 15 feet tall at this point, and uh, it's not a good or easy fit down the little stairs to go below decks. She'd be very crouched and all that. So, she mostly stays up, and then when you fly over to the clearing and drop her off, uh, of course she thanks you warmly and uh, heads off into the forest to seek her father. Um, Harriet might be back later. I don't know. We shall see. It depends on how long we stay digital versus meeting in person and such. Yep. At any rate, though, what time is it? Where are we at? 50, 50 minutes. Okay, good. Good. You begin to make your way from the clearing. It's about... Uh, let's see, day and a half you at probably three-ish we'll say in the afternoon for purposes of life not being ridiculously confusing I'm not going to make it like there are 26 hour days no thank you <laughs> that's way too confusing so it's about three uh o'clock and um, you begin, you can like you can see the hinge of the ancients. It's getting closer and closer, and um, you can actually you look and you can see that there are not a lot of people left at the hinge. Um, there were almost. There's like no standard adventurer looking types like there were in abundance the first time you were over there. Um, 
course you understand that it's likely just because they have gone on varying missions or just we're like um, we're not joining you guys and just left which is fine it happens and uh, here's my question first though how how close are you getting to the hinge before you set down the ship and shrink probably it, uh, and shrink it down I vote like, like, pretty far away like yeah, like, like a half a mile to a mile. Okay, that's fine. Probably enough that nobody would, like, look up and be like, hey, what the fuck is that? I got you. Yeah. I got you. Okay, so um, you you maintain tree cover uh, about a mile out, and you sort of set down. Right. And take the two minutes uh, no. to concentrate, and the ship shrinks down to the size of a matchbox car, and you put it in your pocket. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll put it in clank. Okay. Ah, I open up my chest. Okay, you can tell you that. Yeah, it it sets um, very very nicely right next to the uh, hoot hoot figurine, which you may have forgotten you had. <laughs> oh, I did. Uh, which is again perfectly fine. Um, so you park it, you put it up into uh, Clank, and you begin your journey. We'll say from where you are, it's going to be mostly in an easterly direction. And you come pretty close. You come up to the edge of the hinge. And there is a um, figure standing up on the rocks, on like the, the stone dais. And um, this figure is in black full plate mail. Does not appear to be carrying any sort of weapon, strangely. Like, it's strange enough that you all notice it. Because, you know, all of you carry weapons. And with yeah. the potential exception of Kane, it's obvious that you carry weapons. <laughs> I mean, I think there's literally one within, like, any position my hand can get on um, my body. Um, yeah. These are chef's utensils. <laughs> yeah. Plus, <laughs> uh, Kane, you can just... You can... You don't even need to reach anywhere because you can do like the shadow dagger. <laughs> no, um, shadow bow. bow. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Still, it, that's like that's not put away anywhere, visible. You just yeah. You can just your, like grab like just grab it out of out thin and air it, and it materializes. Yeah, which is badass, frankly. Uh, there are cultists kind of moving about. Um, the tents are still set up that you had seen before that were utilized to uh, begin the process of getting everybody set up. I'm going to move everyone a little bit here. Bear with me. All right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a do a copy and paste kind of a thing. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna move you guys back around. That's Quetzal. Put him there. That's fine. That's Clank. Put the engine there. Great. You're coming from the east, yeah. Bear with me. I'm just 
just getting some uh, <laughs> that frog sound. <laughs> getting oh. some frog sounds. Random. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Evie's watching a little video. Oh, gotcha. This should, if I am not mistaken, this should change for you. It does. It's just a frog. Good. The hinge of the ancients. Yes, yes. And I should have changed the name to Great. Great. Okay. Good, good. There are good. indeed five tents. You don't really know what's in them um, other than like uh, Clank, Quetzal, and Krishna saw the inside. No, I'm sorry. Cain, Quetzal, and Krishna uh, saw the inside of one of the tents when they got set up with their medallions or amulets and you didn't see much of it honestly it, it tended to be sort of cordoned off so it's probably more rooms of the same but you you won't know till you really get in there and look but you see uh, and feel free to that's just kind of where I put you because that's the approximate area where you'll be coming in You'll kind of be on the on the edges there until you decide what you want to do. You have not been seen, so Black Knight is calling out orders. Um, it is by the time you get over to there, they are beginning to prepare the evening meal. As it's getting to be five five thirty ish by the time you get over here. Kane, sneak in there and find our blood. Okay. I think we, I mean, we could probably take them. Let's just let's just ambush the motherfuckers in the middle of the night. But we can let them sneak in there first and find the blood, and then we can kill them. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel safer if our blood was not with them before we kill them all. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think that you know they, they would have time to go searching for the blood when we come up on them. You know, they probably have thousands of vials or hundreds of vials at the least. Yeah. You're not wrong that they that they did recruit quite a few people. Although if Kane does get caught, that would provide a nice distraction for us to come in and flake my brother flake with the motherfuckers. Yeah. I mean <clears throat> waiting till night wouldn't would probably probably wouldn't behoove us anyway. Mm. Oh yeah? At least the fools don't sleep. I don't know, I mean I don't know. I still, I think a, a, a night attack would be better. We all have dark vision and whatnot, right? I don't uh, think I do. But... No, not everyone has. I do because I'm a built dwarven con, but other than that, no. Is it always going to yeah, yeah. I mean, is is the is the moon going to be out? Surely it's not like pitch black. Um, that's true. It is. It would not be pitch black. Yeah, it would be low light. Yeah. And not like you're going to be sniping anybody in top suit. Right. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. I mean, we could wait till nighttime. <laughs> I can try to sneak in and see if I can find the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then if things kind of go sideways, I can maybe try to, like, give a signal of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> Just try to, like, burn a tin on the way out, you know, knock a fire over or something on the way out. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. I feel like I have... Oh. I can't remember if I have, if I have any spell. Oh, wait. I have my, my Ring of the Ram. Um, you do, yes. I wonder... I wonder if there's some way that I could, 
like I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how I could use that to like uh, fire off a signal, but it's just a wave of force, so it would have to have like something underneath of it. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to just. Um. You know. I mean, you could like. Okay. Here's the signal. Okay. If they see one of the one of the tents fly fly into the air. <laughs> right. That's the signal to come running. <laughs> I'll have to duck in and just fire one off if, into whatever the nearest tent that I am. That's very, that's very good. I like it. Is this, is this a, a good strategy? Is everyone in, in agreement? Yeah, uh, let's get uh, set up a little bit so we can actually attack uh, when that All right, happens. Chaps, time's up. Leroy. I grab, <laughs> I grab the bird real quick. I instantly do it. I grab that motherfucker. <laughs> they, they <were> all <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm tr trying to think of how the enemies might react to that. Well, you know, I think maybe if if you were to set one on fire on the way out, then there would be some shouting involved. They'd be shouting to each other, um, and that might cause some confusion, disarray. That would give us more of an advantage. Or they're like, these guys are running at us, screaming, "Kill them!" <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's uh. <laughs> I mean, on the other hand, I mean, technically, I'm, I'm still a member in good standing with them, aren't I? That's true. Yeah. Uh, kind of. They're uh, you you act like you killed us. I mean, right they want to talk to you because they have been unable to find you or track you with your medallion. That's reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily that they're like angsty they're just they're it's probably more like did we like screw up the medallion what happened there we need to meet up with this guy again and recalibrate it <clears throat> so i mean i could do that if damn. like that that might be my initial if i get caught i'm just like oh i'm just i've, I've been here for like an hour <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then if I roll poorly on deception, then I blow a tent off, off its pegs. Yep. <laughs> All right. This this plan has a uh, a reasonable chance for success. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Christian, I'm gonna stay with you wherever you go, just so I can kind of be give you some luck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are all these people gonna stay in the same position at nighttime, Gerald? Um, as of right now, from what you can see, they are well, gathering about around the cook fires to get some, uh, some food. Um, huh. they don't seem to be wildly concerned about guarding the tents at this very moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Black Knight stands on the, uh, like, still stands vigilant on the, the dais. All right. Yep, yep. Let's see. Okay. So have we waited yet or nah? Um, at this point, you haven't, but it would be... I mean, it's reasonable to do so if that's what you want to do. So you're waiting until nightfall? Is that correct? Yeah, until gets a little darker easier to kind of blend into stuff okay sure. I th at least i think at least i think that's better it would also be easier to hide the other people absolutely uh okay so as time begins to pass where do we go where are the hunters and searching stuff okay the people begin to disperse a little bit at least this one goes over here. These two go in here. We'll say this one goes here. And these guys begin to. Okay. Just kind of moving some stuff around. All right. You're good. Stand and watch a little bit. Uh, actually, okay. So this guy's going to kind of stand and watch over here. 
and this one's gonna come out shop here. And there you go. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm still starting over here. Are there flaps on both sides of the tents, or just like on, like? It's just the... on the inner, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to, with knife in hand, come up and try to. And they're not lit inside, are they? Just like all dark. That's correct. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna try to come in and then like try to cut an, a small opening. Ooh. In so I can like see. Okay. It's like uh, because it's just canvas tents, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just try to t uh, take a dagger and cut a small enough hole to be able to get a good look inside. See if there's anything. Of... Okay. Uh, first things first. Let me self check. Twenty-three. Nice. Okay, very good. Um, you are able to easily sneak up uh, when the Black Knight sort of turns away from that direction, and like the other folks have no idea what's going on, um, and you cut gently cut a hole in the back of the tent. So there's a nice, I don't know, maybe three and a half, four foot hole there. I'll need to do a huge hole, like a, like big, like several feet. I'm just wanting to get a look inside first. Oh, just a little, okay, that's fine. Like, just do like a little slit, maybe like, like two or three inches. Gotcha, okay. That's just and fine. if there's, and then if there is something of, uh, a value that I want to get to in there, then okay. I would give me a perception Percept check at disadvantage because you don't have dark vision and it's dark in that tent. Do I, don't, do I don't have dark vision as a penumbra? Oh, I guess you would. Fair enough. Never mind. You do. That's just, a, that's, just that seems a little role. silly to <laughs> just a regular. Role. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely We're right. We're the best assassins in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So we are we are the shadow. So we we blend into uh, to it. We use it. We can't see in it, but we use it. Yeah. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. You're good. Absolutely right. It doesn't matter any, either way. Okay. I don't know if I don't know if you saw that or not. Natty twenty. Nice. Nice, dude. Nice. Um, you look in, and the partitions have been taken down. Uh, the sort of chairs and stuff rearranged, and there is a uh, there's a singular sort of cot in there, and there's a bed, there's like a bedside table kind of thing mm -hmm. that has. So there's a number one. There's a cultist sleeping in the bed, and there is. There's like there's some it's very light uh, or faint, if you will, uh, faint candlelight coming from the other side of the tent where another cultist seems to be reading some kind of book or scroll or something. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll say a book for purposes of this. And on the bedside table there is a small. Uh, small chest. It almost looks okay. like a briefcase, actually. Like it has a handle. Uh, the cultist reading uh, is seems to be very focused on on the reading. Does not frequently because you kind of watch him for a, a few minutes. Right, uh, doesn't look up very frequently. Seems to be voraciously uh, devouring the book. Reads quickly. See, try to decide if that chest is worth to 
going after or not. Um, I think I'm going to skip by this one for, for now. Okay. Um, sm small chest doesn't seem like it's going to be where they've got the blood. Okay. If they would have it. All right. Um, let's see. So I'll probably, in trying to move to the other one over here, okay, go like around, like take like a like an outside sort of maneuvering, like that. Okay. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Very good. Another, another stealth check. Yes. Twenty one's real good. Got that sweet, sweet stealth. Miss, uh, you're good to go. Let's go to a little small hole. Another perception check, please. Right. Oh. 19. Okay. Very good, very good. Got your round perception. Nineteen is very good. So you see. Let me just close that. Okay. Cool. Let's see. I'm trying to do like three things at once. You're good. <laughs> yeah, this I'm just this gives me so much time to get everything ready, so this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. So the nineteen. You look into the tent. And this one also has it's set up kind of similarly to To the other one in that mm -hmm. you can see that there are sort of like panels of the sort of walled curtain that have been moved over to the side and it's more of a sleeping area at this very moment there is a cultist sleeping in this one as well and uh, with a 19 underneath the bed there is uh, what it looks like a, it's like a, a footlocker sized chest. Mm -hmm. uh, so that sort of slid underneath the bed. Okay. Yep. But just the one, so. So get based on how many people there were before, this doesn't seem like the type of place that they store the blood. Would you say that's correct? Given the, you mean like based on the size of the container, or yeah, based on like the like the size of the Foot Locker, and judging on the number of people that I saw that were here before signing up, I would I would have assumed that there's a lot more storage required. Yes, assuming that the Foot Locker chest is not extra dimensional. Yes, that's a good point. In, uh, in, you don't know whether it is or not. That's a good point. Uh, I'm. I'm going to continue to uh, just try to go down and figure out what's in each of them before I make a move to any of them. I think, unless I see something obvious. Sure, sure, sure. So I'll do the same thing. I'll go back out and take the outside route. Okay. To get to the next one instead of just going like straight across through here. Sure. And... 
Roll stealth again. Nice. Yep, 28. <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. And perception. Same roll. 20. Good lord. <laughs> it's now, two 17s. I get, I get an 11 in both perception and stealth. Yeah. Are you... Wow. So you're, you're moving up to the back of this tent? Yeah. And that perception is to look inside of it okay so you're oh i got you so you're right there yep over here okay got it so you cut a little slit and again perfectly silent there's not even like the sound of the tear of fabric <laughs> um, more than likely because your dagger's so sharp there's just there's just no friction to cause noise because it, it cuts through that so easily. You peek your head in, and you had when you when you were watching into the night, um, you only saw a single cultist enter into this area, mm -hmm. into this tent. But there are two people present. Therein. Okay. Uh, so someone's been there all day. Someone's been presumably. in there all day doing something. Yes. Uh, and this is where you see your sort of more conventional, uh, big, like, uh, hope chest size chest. Just a big old, big old storage container. And you see, okay, how do I want to describe this? Uh, it's being done very quietly, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you see an individual putting bags of um, from the sound of it, coins into the chest. Oh. And there are two important things that you notice that are going to prove to be important to you. Number one is that some of the bags that you notice being put into this chest bear a very familiar marking. Aha! I knew it! I.e. the Karaki family. The Karaki Press. family seal. Oh. Yes! And secondarily, or in your eyes, in Kane's eyes, primarily, the individual putting the coins into the chest is a very familiar tiefling. With a false hand. Stab that motherfucker. Oh. I'm going to need Kane to make a wisdom saving throw to see if he can resist oh. the rage that is boiling inside of him. If oh, you even come want to do on. That, feel free to give in to it. <laughs> okay. 19. 19 is pretty good, man. Oh, my training has served me well. <laughs> uh, okay. you. <laughs> you, you almost lose control. I mean, Kane has definitely become more unstable since his father's death. Yeah, like you, the 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 rage, the power, the like degree of rage that hits you is so intense. And so yeah, sudden that I, get, that I gain a level in Barbarian. That, barbarian. That you get a little, <laughs> like, you, you can, like, taste a little bile, actually. Just, I have to work out in prison. Like, you just see some shit pissed you off. Just, like, the, the, the <laughs> rage. Uh, you have the wherewithal. Kane has the wherewithal to not just barge in and stab this guy. But it's very, very difficult 
you have to take a handful of very slow steadying breaths before you can even look back into the tank um, he's still there and in fact I will uh, I have a cool link oh side note real quick why do I need to make a signal didn't we get those little uh yeah, you communicators. You have communicators, but you have to speak, which is fine uh, if you've already been found. But it's it's not telepathic. Fair enough. And both of the the individuals inside are awake and doing stuff. Yes. Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, this is much more important than, than the blood I was looking for in the first place. <laughs> Hold up. Okay. Um. <laughs> decisions, decisions, Kane. I'm. There are also two more tents. I know, that's why I'm thinking it. Um, <clears throat> not, I mean, to, we will help murder. To... Oh, we'll murder. We're going to murder, guys. King's been gone yeah. for a while. Time to Leroy Jenkins our way in there? Almost. <laughs> almost. I'm going to, after that that big, big time wisdom saving throw, mm -hmm. I'm going to, like, talk myself off the ledge, kind of. And okay. realize that I need to get all of the surveillance that I can. Um, whenever I get back over, like on the other side of the one of these little pit, like the hinge things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to assume that I'm like that'd be like out of earshot. You are, yeah. So I'm going to try to whisper, communicate, and tell them exactly what I just saw in the third tent. Namely, it's it like I believe it, that this is where the money that they stole is being kept, and it's also clearly an extra dimensional container. Yeah. To hold the amount of money that they took. Oh yeah. Unless they've spent it all, which. Wow. Well, they would haven't be spent all of But all right. So. I relay that to everyone else mm -hmm. and tell them what I saw in the first two tents as well. Okay. Do any of you reply? I say Roger, Roger. <laughs> I feel we could potentially have Kane sneak back into that tent and sneak attack Demico since we know that that pussy likes to teleport out while the rest of us do a frontal assault. <clears throat> what about the blood? Uh, we're, I'm worried about people being controlled. Well, if anybody would be, it would be him. I would, I would think. Well, Who's all, blood? Of, all of you, uh, you still have your medallions. I think even Quetzal's um, was found in the tree. Uh, yeah. Um, oh. It's just <clears throat> you're not wearing it because, you know, bad mm. things happen when you wear it. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. so I don't see where you're going with that. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try to scope out this tent over here. Sure. Real quick. Okay. So we'll go ahead and hit up the old stealth first. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Mmm. Low roll on the chest on the perception. Okay. Um okay. This is the fifth tent. I'm making notes here too so I don't forget stuff. Um the fourth tent just seems to have the cultist in it. Um there's a handful of coins on like the bedside table, um, along with like 
some strips of paper. Uh, mm -hmm. Nothing that really calls out to you as unnatural or weird. Right. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll move to the last one. Okay. Give me that stealth check, brother man. And... All right. 26 is probably good. 26 is very good. And a 22 perception. Ooh. Nice. This is literally what my character is made for. Yeah, it is. Sneak around and look at things. Sneak around and look at things. <laughs> also jump off of things. Yep. I can do those three things very, very well with the score. Mm -hmm. Everything else I'm like decent-ish in, but... <laughs> Yeah. Um, the fifth tent doesn't have anybody in it. Which makes sense because you didn't see anybody go in there. Um, mm -hmm. This is more of a storage kind of area. Um, there's mm -hmm. lots of uh, like full locker sized chests. You have a couple of bigger ones, a couple of smaller ones. Um, there's a couple that are, uh, they look almost like little, little jewelry box type sized stuff. Uh, there's a weapon rack in there that has what is fairly obviously mundane weaponry upon it. Mm -hmm. Um, but nothing that, again, like there's nothing in here that screams like, oh, this is... Some of it might have something important in it, but there's nothing visibly obvious from the outside. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Um, okay. Since I'm pretty alone over here, I'll go ahead and I'll just tell that, tell the guys the tent four just has a, just, just a dude. Yeah. Um, and that the there's just some storage in the fifth tent. It, okay. it does hold promise. It it could could potentially be where they're keeping stuff because there is a lot of like stuff like storage stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your replies? Do you reply anything? Just acknowledgement again. Hello? Is everybody there? Oh, sorry. What? Uh, Any... <laughs> wow. Roger, Roger. Every... Sorry. I'll Everyone's just... zoned out. Uh, Goodness no, gracious. I'll just... I'll just say Roger, Roger. I'm updating my character sheet, so I kind of missed that. No, I that. heard what was going oh. on. Fifth, fifth okay. tent has the storage. I understand. Okay. Roger, fifth, Roger. fifth tent has storage stuff. Fourth tent has a dude who's just asleep. Um... Well, I'm thinking we're definitely going to have to attack these motherfuckers, so I'm thinking, you know, it might be optimal tactically to attack Damakos' tent first. Just, um, but perhaps have somebody go around the rear so that when those assholes on the block start to come towards us, they can be flanked from the rear. Yeah. Have, have, uh, Kane do maybe that. Have, right? uh, maybe have Quetzal back there since he can fly but really fast. Yeah, and I'll stay I, as long as I have to stay within a radius of you guys. We should be fine. Yeah, yeah. Or I should be able to uh, not die, <clears throat> and then you guys save my ass while I try to be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happens, you know. Okay. If you're moving from your position in a way that is intended to be stealthy, mm, pardon me, please. Uh, roll um, that their stealth check and where are you going? Oh, hey, um, whoa, whoa, I will. Whoa. How about I'll make my way back and do a okay. pass without trace around everybody. Yeah. Okay. To get us uh, in um, I will say, given your innate eleven of stealthnessness, that you can basically just kind of skirt around the outside without too much issue, really. Um, okay. Because otherwise you'd be making stealth checks every time you moved, and that'd be a little bit right. tedious. So, um, 
we'll say that that 26 that you rolled will kind of maintain you back to the group and you can relay any further information that you might have and then figure out and let's let's get uh, organized all right <clears throat> okay, so you cast Pass Without a Trace, which I believe for you costs two shadow points. That's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to check. I'm look that up real quick. Okay. To be certain. Special beam cannon, dude. That's hilarious. Wonderful. <laughs> the flavor text you have is hilarious. <laughs> like you're a motherfucking Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Let's see, uh, actually, you only have it as a uh, one. Okay, great. That's fine. I think it's a first level spell or something. So, yeah. Makes sense. All right. So everyone has plus ten to their stealth rolls for the next. I believe it's an hour. Is there a way to add that on the sheet uh, as like a no, temporary but, thing? I mean, in theory, but it would be just easier to manually add it. Ah separately i mean you can also do like it's just plus 10 r r slash you know d20 plus whatever your normal stuff bonus is plus 10 to it so yeah you can do it that way too it's just 10 is not a it's not a crazy number to just tack on to whatever number you want well on the other version we play there there's like a section where you can choose like a temporary effect and it actually applies it to your stats instantly like if oh. you give us a debuff or something i'll have to look into that i'm not sure it might be the paid version of the game truthfully oh and that's possible and we need to talk about that more uh yeah. a little bit probably after we get back from our break which will be relatively soon actually so yep sounds good um, everyone move to where you are going to be for this next stage, and then give me stealth checks, plus 10. All right, so we're, are we, we trying to get over... Walk far enough, at what point will we need a stealth check? Like, at what point could they hear and see us? So, technically, you have to make one after every time you move. And if you're trying to move stealthily, you have to move at half speed. But here's the thing, that is real tedious and I don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is just move to where you want to be. I don't care where it is, where, where you want to be for this. And then we're going to get stealth checks at that point. So it's kind of like a single stealth check across the whole space. So maybe it's real good. Hopefully it's not real bad, but we'll, we'll play that by ear. Yeah. I was just hoping that or wondering if there was a way to dodge the stealth roll altogether, perhaps by just moving out of range, circling around, take a big fucking huge circle around, and then coming back toward the camp. Well, in order to get close enough to be immediately effective, you're going to have to make yeah. a cell check anyway. Yeah, you're right, right, right. So you might as well just, you know. So how, how do we turn off that advantage, that inherent advantage? Um, um, on your character sheet, uh, go to back to that little settings thing. Yeah. Side of spells. On the right side, uh, kind of, well, where was it at? It's right, it's, it's you know, on the right side, it's called roll queries. And where yeah. it says always roll advantage, advantage. click okay, that yeah. and hit advantage toggle. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And, and then that'll then... put a little thing at the top of your screen where you can... Switch to advantage or normal or disadvantage. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. There you go. Easy peasy. Nice. Mm -hmm. And we'll kind of talk about uh, software as well. I think that it would behoove us to stick with Roll20 just because it is accessible just in the web browser. Yeah. So, like, you don't need any... You don't have to install any software to get it to work, um, which is a big factor. The only issue with that is Roll20 is has like a yearly subscription, whereas Fantasy Grounds is paid. You pay for it instantly, and you just have it forever. You don't have to buy. Yeah, it's one and done. Pay for it more. You can subscribe to Fantasy Grounds, but 
it would be dumb to if you can just buy it out. Right? But that's for a little bit later. Um, okay, is everybody where they are wanting to be? Uh, where are you at, Krishna? Are, are, are those stones like hollow in the center? So like, like the Stonehenge, like arches? Yes, you can yeah. see the shadow gaps. Yeah, like right, right there, it's light. It's light. Yeah. Light. There are standing stones and then cross beams. And where are you, Bob? Uh, I'm still right here. I haven't really moved anywhere. Where's um, right here? To the left. Over on, on the... Oh, I see. I see you guys now. That's you. Yeah. Yeah. Krishna got a 28 stealth. Fucking dang. Crazy Sweet. luck. Oh, Krishna, you're in full plate. Uh, yeah. So you have disadvantage on your stealth rolls. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you rolled a natural 18. So go yeah, ahead that's and, crazy. Go ahead and roll again. <laughs> so go ahead and fuck that up real quick. Go ahead and roll again, Krishna. <laughs> just, just do like another regular roll, and we'll just take the lowest of those two. Okay. <laughs> it's 12. What it's 12. The it's 12. It's not it's not that bad. It's 12. It, it, 12 still pretty bad. Okay. That's better than 2. Uh, Clank got a 24. Good. Now, let's let's see what everybody else does and then we'll go from there. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. Wow. So and 23. Rolled a 2. Wow. Wow. Uh, okay, 23. And then Quetzal, also 23. A lot of 23s. And a 12. Okay. 20, 23, 23, 24, and 12. Alright. So you all begin making your way very carefully. Uh, Except for me. A trip over a fucking rock or something. <laughs> Quetzal, are you staying there? Is that where you want to be? Uh, I think I'm good here. We're in a nice flanking. Okay. Yeah, I think, I'm I think gonna so be too. up yeah. uh, north is uh Krishna. Chris, Krishna. Yeah, okay. You're yeah. up here. So okay. I'll hide behind this rock with you. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I mean the only problem is like that's a lot of distance to cover if uh, you get in trouble there, Bob. I can fly. Okay. Yep. I believe you can fly. <laughs> I believe I can fly. <laughs> done and done. <laughs> He's gonna get shot now. <laughs> Help! Help! It's, like, it's, it's okay, guys. I can fly. I like the Quetzal right. can't fly. I mean, so this is this is like just become his alternative to it's okay. I'm a bear. <laughs> it's okay, I'm a bird. Uh, so it's okay. I everything fly. everything seems to be going very well. Uh, Kane, for some time during your movement across the way. Uh, you're pretty impressed with, with Krishna's ability to move quietly in full plate. And then uh, he almost trips on a larger stone that's kind of, uh, just kind of sticking out. And he goes to catch himself against the, the hinge. And it is loud. Clang, 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 clang. Uh, uh, yes? <laughs> you <laughs> rang <laughs> not you and uh, you hear what was that very very sort of video game like stealth video Obli game. oblivion guards yeah can I can I who like an owl and an individual one of the, <laughs> sure give me a, a, a performance performance <laughs> <laughs> all right this uh this is a plus one. <laughs> and I'm gonna use my lucky feet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my I'm gonna look at, uh, use lucky feet which to to re roll, okay. Yes, to re roll. Uh there it is. You said it's plus one? Plus one. Oh okay, it says plus zero right now. Okay. Uh so it's a fifteen. Oh, I I don't know how to add it. It's my um uh, what is it called? Luck in all trades. I get a plus one to oh. all skills. I'm not perfect. I gotcha. No, you can do that in the uh, in that little settings, like that little gear section. 
if you just scroll down into the it's the very middle column towards the bottom you'll just see where it has all the skills yeah. listed and you can just put a miscellaneous modifier on thing in the skills a uh, custom skills over there um if you it yeah has... if you hit that little down yeah. like at the bottom it should be like just like the same like all of the <laughs> i don't see it hey can you look at my uh sheet uh gerald and see what he's talking about let's see give me just a quick second let's take a look is it below the passive uh wisdom or the perception so wait does um so like near at the top near where it says like core bio spells and then the little gear yes oh there i see click the click that gear and then you should have like three column like three sections in the middle one at the very bottom there you should see just another list of all of the oh i see oh nice okay yeah yeah so you, you can, can just, you can just put a miscellaneous modifier of any kind yeah onto that or can, into any of those you can set your proficiencies and stuff too yeah that way like and and it, like for me it let me set expertise in a few of mine so it doubled my proficiency bonus yeah oh ah. yeah yeah it's very did good. not know about that good no. so you hoot like an owl and <laughs> uh the furthest away so like both of the cultists that were manning outside of the tent hear the clang and go to investigate the one the one on the uh, left here is like eh it's just an owl but the one on the right is still like oh I need to I'm still going to check it out um you hear that. as a quick action could i maybe draw poot hoot out an owl okay oh goodness <laughs> and make him run away away from here you know what i mean like act like he's being distracted by that like who dude is gonna run away like send him like running off like this yeah west. like he got spooked gotcha like oh it was an owl bear all the all along okay uh so you <laughs> you summon hoot hoot where are you summoning hoot hoot uh wherever he okay so you heard krishna i'm gonna say hoot hoot's gonna be like here I'll say here and he's just gonna run away this way he's gonna run away i see Facebook notifications. It's annoying. Sorry if that's coming through on the sound there. Uh, here we go. Okay. Let me hoot hoot. He's a bear. He is a bear. So you summon hoot hoot. I summon hoot hoot. And hoot hoot just like. Hoot hoot! Hoot hoot! <laughs> and the cult is just like, oh fuck! <laughs> it's an owl bear! And Hoot hoot just runs off this way? Yeah. It's like a 40 it foot runs. movement. Like just run, double moves, runs off into the wilderness. Yeah. Here's that stupid measuring tape out. <laughs> Is there a button you use to do that? How are you what? measuring? Oh, yeah. on the left side. Draw... Huh? You get the little brush to uh. The... Where you can click on it has like your arrow. It has a brush. Has a yeah. A ruler. You click on the ruler. Okay. And and then there's I can actually hide it from others too. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I can. <laughs> oh, you can? Yeah, I'm, I'm the dungeon uh, master. Of course I can. Oh, <laughs> you can see all. 
Okay, well, anyway. Good thing I didn't draw that dick. <laughs> I deleted it. I synced it. I synced it. <laughs> Alright. So, does that make him turn around at least? So, he is... Uh... He starts running back, and he's like, Owlbear, Owlbear, and they, uh, but it's like running this way, right? Yeah. So, the, the, all right. Yeah. I'm going to say that everybody needs to come. Like over near me, and we all just need to hide for a little while while they chase after an owl bear. Uh, before that happens, we're gonna go ahead and take our break. Okay. Ah. I think. Yeah, we're going. To, we'll go ahead and take a break, and then we'll come back with more <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right. Uh, for those of you watching, we will be very shortly coming back this out of the way. Yes. yeah intimidate him yeah. Yeah. yeah i also hoot hoot <laughs> i'll run away <laughs> all right we're going to the break time later later